We will start the, the this week parasha, parasha b'shalach. Parasha b'shalach is a very happy Shabbat for the Har Yisrael. Therefore, why? Because we're going to sing the Shira, Shira of Yashir. Therefore, it's a very special Shabbat. Now, Chazal, Chazal, tell us what's so special about this Shabbat. Because really, there were 10 Shirot that was said from Adam Harishon till Mashiach. And the 10th one, Mashiach is going to say. Where there are 10 shiro. Now, what does it mean there are 10 shiro? Well, we have a lot of shiro. All of the telling is full of shiro and zimro and praise of our Baruch Hu. What's so special about this 10 shiro? Now, Khamen tell us that, you know, number 10 is a very important number in the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it like that? Because our Kodesh Baruch Hu created the world on the base of 10, 10 sefirot, so 10 nomination from HaKadosh Baruch Hu created all of the dimension of the creation. The word dimension of creation is based on 10. Now, when we say, we have to say Abraham has 10 is, you know, somebody said that during the day I have 100 is, sorry. No, Abraham has 10 is, you know, only in all the lifetime, span of lifetime. No, shot is that 10 is, you know, Abraham he captured 10 process of life. Life has 10 processes. No, the growth of a person are two ways of growth. One way is that the person gets to a level and horizontally he grows. The level is the same, but he expands it. In other words, he learns, he learns about Shabbat. No, he keeps Shabbat, little bit here, little bit there. Somebody, the growth is vertical. It makes from one level to another level. He goes to higher. You cannot compare the notes of Shabbat. This Shabbat is much different because he learns about Shabbat. He understands Shabbat better. Shabbat goes in bones and his, his cells and he relates to Shabbat better. Shabbat becomes a different dimension for him. People always grow in life or two ways. One way horizontal, one vertical. Always you have to try to grow vertically. It's not just expand ourselves. We have to elevate. We have to from one level higher and higher. Now, once we say Abraham Babinu had 10 not means that he elevated himself in 10 process of life, 10 sefirot, and he elevated, he came up and up, and he got to the peak. That's the, that's the point. Now, 10 shirot also, every shiro elevates the Holy Spirit in one way. And Builds us, builds us up and to bring us up and higher and higher. There will be something very special about this Shira that this other shame we're going to talk about. What's so special that it brings it up? That's one of them. Now, the beginning of the parasha, parasha says, in other words, the beginning of the parasha, the very parasha, it sounds like East, Middle East politics. In other words, there is a parasha in Torah. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the Holy Spirit out of Mitzrayim to give them the land of Jews. In that puzzle that talks about the first initiation of Eretz Israel for Jews, all of the politics of Middle East is in that puzzle. Listen to the puzzle, it's unbelievable puzzle. When Paro sent them out, we don't have to keep the Eretz HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't lead them there at Eretz Pristine. In other words, if you look on the map, there is on north, they come from Mishnai, on north there is a strip to come to Eretz Pristine, very, by the, by the, by the Yamsuf, very straight they could come. No, HaKadosh Baruch Hu didn't lead them there at Eretz Pristine, the way of Eretz Pristine. Ki Karohu, because it's close, Ki Amar Elohim, because Hashem says, Peni Nachem Haram Birotam Milchama, because men, blessed, they, will be considered when they see the Milchama war, the Shavu, the Shavu Mishai, they couldn't go back to stay back to Mishai. Therefore, the first obstacle of going to Eretz Israel is Derech Eretz Prishti, Gaza Strip. Unbelievable. Gaza Strip is the greatest obstacle that the Oshwar who says, I have to change my plan because that Gaza Strip. Because Derech Eretz Prishti, you call Eretz Prishti. Because Prishtim is the obstacle for them. In other words, in reality, it means that the Hal Israel 
you are not in such a high dargo to deal with that obstacle. And that obstacle stayed for them from the beginning of going to Israel till now. Because our Torah says, if I take you that way, you're going to go back to Messiah. You will see Milchama, because they are very vicious. They are very, in other words, and every time that you want to fight the Tuma, you need to create such a Kedusha. You need to work much harder on yourself to be able to capture them. And you are not ready for that. If you see the Milchaman war, you're going to come back to Mitzrayim. Therefore, I would say, I'm not going to lead you with that strip. I take you around, around the Israel, and I take you to the Israel in a different way that you should avoid that obstacle right now because you're not ready for that. It's an unbelievable point to understand. Till now, we have this problem of Gaza Strip that you see in news and all of the politics of the Middle East that the, the viciousness of them makes such a big trouble for Gahar Israel. He says in the puzzle, right, when it's going to a restaurant. Now, there's another thing that you have to pay attention. Who well, takes them in the wilderness to take them to a restaurant. Wilderness, there is a lot of own danger. There's a danger of not having food, not having, being in a not safe place. But Pelishti is a mock of tomb. Now, we have two ways to go. One way is the makom of tumor, contaminating tumor. There's another way that you don't have food, you don't have, you know, there is a meat bar and there is a danger. Now, a lot of times we feel the danger of lack of food, the danger of the desert, but we don't understand the danger of the makom of tumor. In other words, a person would be so frightened to take his children to a desert, to a place that there's no food, there is nothing around these animals, but with his own hands, he will pay some money to take his family to talk about tumor. Contamination of tumor. It's unbelievable. The pastor is saying, for the spark who is teaching you has the wrong education in life. If there are two ways, one way takes you to Prishtim, to talk about tumor, you're gonna, you're gonna expose your children to tumor, and you never know what happens to them. That's more dangerous. How Shwarbu says, no, you have to pick the way that goes. And Habit Chaim says from this puzzle, he gave such a great musar to those people that endanger their spiritual life for Parnosa. He said, oh, I have Parnosa, I have to do this, I have to do this. They endanger their ruh, their spirituality, their everlasting, their family for Parnosa. He says, you see, the puzzle says, not like that. The puzzle says, you go the right way, the proper way, and through that, you're going to make the parnos. Now, we learn another yesod here when we fight with the Tzerara. Now, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, if I take them to the they're going to go back to Messiah. If I take them the other way, we cut the bridge. Very interesting. Torah is teaching us in psychology of fighting the Tzerara, a lot of times, we leave a bridge behind. Subconsciously, we leave a bridge behind. We, we fool ourselves. We, we, we say, no, we doesn't matter. I did the shuba. But no, there's a bridge behind. Why did you leave the bridge behind? Because you want to go back. That's not a complete shuba. Complete shuba is that the person has to cut all of the bridges. You disassociate yourself from the sin, from the things. Therefore, any type of bridge that it could get you back. In other words, the Gemara says that the dicer is, is, is doing shuba when he comes and breaks his dice. As long as he's keeping his dice and he crosses some place with, uh, with logs and everything with the code, still it's a connection with it. You have to disconnect. And once the person disconnect, it would be a different, different matter for him. But I still give it on the reference team. He put in Bahamushim all over Israel. Now, Hamushim means the arm. They came with arm in Israel. Now, the Midrash says, Rashi says, Hamushim means one fifth. And most of them died in Makat Choshik. In other words, word, why did they die? Why did they die? And who died? Now, the Midrash says that why did I was working for Brown Makat Choshik? I was working for Brown Makat Choshik to filter the Hal Israel to destroy him. That that they had to be, they had to die, they had to be killed before coming, they had to die. And if Ahadosh Baruch would kill them, would make them die, 
And Mitzri would see that, they would say, oh, you know, uh, just like we got plagued, the Jews got plagued. It was not God of Jews. They actually made darkness and filtered the Holy Spirit. Through filtering the Holy Spirit, it killed, now who died? Now here, by the Radiam Su, we find Chazor say that when I was sure who wanted to, to split the yam, my Achim said, Elu Hudab Dozora, Elu Hudab Dozora. These people are Hudab Dozora, these people are Hudab Dozora. Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to help them? Unbelievable. Yeah, for those who were ideal worshippers, they didn't die in Koshach. But Chazor tell us, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought before Makat Bechoro that finalized the Geula, he brought Koshach and darkness to filter the Holy Spirit. And he killed, and it, they died. A lot of people died. Who died? No, unbelievable, you so in Torah. You see, those that are idol worshippers, they didn't die. Because here by Kirad Yamsu, Eru Abdozora, Eru Abdozora. They were those that are idol worshippers, they died. Who died? No, no. Oh, look at the Lash. Lash says, Rashi says, who died? Talking about the mystery? No, Jews, Jews. Oh. Well, Hamushim, they came is one fifth. Four fifth died. No, the four fifth is there. They have to answer the problem. The ones who are saying this time, 80%. Right. No, the, the, those that they died, no, that's it. The number doesn't mean, you could understand, the number doesn't mean it's a qualified number. It means that every Jew is a full of money. Therefore, could be a lot of Jews. But point is, a lot of Jews died. Now, my question is, who died? Right? You know, the purpose of dying was to filter the Holy Spirit. Now, I would have thought all of the ideal worshippers should die, right? But here, the Radiam Su, by the Radiam Su, by Spirit Yom, you see that Malachim have a claim that Israel would have Zorah, Israel would have Zorah. So there are some Jews here who would have Zorah that they don't deserve that the Yam should split for them. And they got saved, they came out on side. They went through Makat Koshik. So my question is, who died in Makat Koshik? If ideal worshiper didn't die, who died in Makat Koshik? Does that have the question? Yes, you hear the question? No, the answer is unbelievable answer. You saw in life. Mamoshi, you saw in life. Hazor tell us that whoever died, they were those that Dora Tula said. They didn't want to come out of Mishraim. They didn't want to come out of Mishraim. Those that they didn't want to come out of Mishraim, they died. What does that tell us? That tell us this parasha is parasha of Geula. Redemption. If you want to beguile yourself, if you want to create redemption for yourself, the first step is that you should want it. If you don't want it, nobody could help you. Even HaKadosh Baruch Hu cannot help you. In other words, in other words, the greatest psychologist says that somebody has a problem. If he wants to do something about it, then somebody could help. But somebody that doesn't have anybody, in other words, he doesn't want to help himself, then nobody could help him. That's a very important result in life. We cannot compel people to help them. Person has to want, and if there is a will, there is a way. Unbelievable. Those that are over the Buddha Hashem saves them. Because good, not over the Buddha Sora, but they're gonna see how much power they're gonna change. They're gonna come up. But somebody who doesn't want to help himself, Hashem doesn't help him. They died in Khoshan. Therefore, the filtering of Khoshan was those that they don't want to come out. Now, by, by Giradam Suf, we see that. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told them, I don't Hashem Moshe, that they, they went some, some of the ways, and Hashem told them to come back wherever that you went and come back by, by sea. You understand? Now in the Pesukim you see that Hashem told them they were out of Mishraim, Hashem said, come back. They say, why? We have to go away from Mishraim, why do we have to go come back by the Yam, come by the Yam and get ourselves in the corner that the best target for Mishraim? They didn't say anything. They say, once I go to who wants that, we're going to do that. Therefore, what they do, they, 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 what they do, they, they, what they do, what do they do? What they do, they, right. What did they do? Uh, 
disruptor. Disrupting. I double edged motion, but uh you know I said I worship Mudan Namurdan. I said you more than and feel that right. that was the filter of the high You have right. to want to help yourself. You don't want to be helped, and nobody can help. Nobody can. That's how we stop. Very good. They were they came to the they were they came, they, but they, they they came back and they were by 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 the yam and the museum came. Now, if you see the picture, visualize the picture, we have an interesting picture here. I should have brought it. The picture shows that the museum are all around of the Hal Israel, and Gah is the yam and there's the midbar. In other words, they are in a very narrow, straight line. Yeah, 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 there's no one else to do it. Mahmase is the best word. How do you say Mahmase in English? Mahmase. Mahmase. Quandary. Huh? It's called a quandary. Quandary? Cock and a quandary. So there's no way to go. Right. There's no way to go. I have no return. Right. Therefore, 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 in that in that position, the Holy Soil became five divisions. Some say that let's fight with them. Some say they want to go back to Mistai. Some say they make noise. Some say that you know we are stuck here. Why did they, they complain against Moshe? But, but Moshe Rabbeinu told them, don't be afraid, you should keep quiet, and you're gonna see the 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 Yeshua about the Now I want to talk a little bit about this episode that how come the Holy Spirit, everybody asks this question, how come the Holy Spirit, that they saw all of the plagues and all of the things that Hashem did, here by Kiradam Suf, they feel that Hashem who doesn't do them. They say that it's better for us to die in Mishraim than be here. Now, Bichlal, we know that the Shira that the Holy Spirit said, they didn't sing when they came out from the Mishraim, they, they sung, by the Adam Suf. Why? What was so special about the Adam Suf that the singing happened mm. at that time? They should have seen, they should have sung when they came out of Israel. Why do you have to wait for the Adam Suf? Now, in, therefore, and what is it that they feel that what they feel that I was who brought them out now they seem they can destroy them? Uh, Ten plagues and everything should have been good enough. Then there is the apostle says by Yaminu Bahashe Moshabdo. They believe in Hashem and Moshe Abdo. What did they believe? They didn't have belief so far. They came out with Israel. What did they mean by Hashem Moshe Abdo? And uh, there are a lot of, lot of other questions that with one yes thought that we could understand, we could understand all of the students. In other words, by Spirit of Yom, the Midrash says that Malachim that the time. What was the time of Malachim? Malachim said, these are ideal worshippers. These are ideal worshippers. Why did Abu would want to make nests for them? So I want to ask you a question. Where were the Malachim when they were the temple of blood? When the frogs came? When all of the ten plagues came in Mishraim, no Malach protested. But all of a sudden, by the Adam Suf, the Midrash says, the Malachim were sleeping. All of a sudden, they got up and they are saying that, you know, how do you do it? They are over there with those other ones. Now, if you notice in Haggadah, there's in Haggadah, what do we do? We compare what the Haggadah did in Misraim and what is it up in Yagadah. So we say that by Misraim, whatever that would say, Spa Elohim, that was the spa, the finger of God. But by Kiradam, it was a yak. Yeah, I'm sure with the yad hand by 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 Mishnah it was the expert. No, what's the difference between a finger and hand? Why Mishnah in ten plagues is called finger, and what happened by the Adam is called hand? We see it in Hagoda every year. We by ten Pesach we read it. And what what does that mean? Why is it like that? I don't know, but just the opposite. In the quantity and quality of it. Ten plagues are much, much greater than than the Adam Su. Adam Su is just one nest. Qualified quantity, quantity. And why finger and hand? That finger is hand. Why is it like that? No, the Yisod is like this. Before she explain, what's the function of this spot? What does finger do? Finger points out. What do we do, finger? Huh? What do we do, finger? Point out something. Points out something. What do we do with the hand? 
take it, Let's take it, you take it, hands, take it, take it out of your children, you take it out of things, you take it with hands, you do things, you prepare things, you bring things, take it. Now, Hakadosh Baruch in Mitzrayim was bringing his own malchut. He was showing, pointing out his human majesty. Just like you have 10 Sabiro, 10 Amaro, 10 statements that Hashem created the world, 10 plagues also Hashem expresses manhood. He's pointing out his manhood. There was the purpose of 10 plagues were to show the manhood of Hashem. And that is the function of a finger. What does finger do? Finger shows the manhood of Hashem. No, by Kiradiam Suf, Hashem has to take it up Halisoil for their own merit, for their own zechut. Take it up them to save them. Salvation for Amisoil, for Amisoil. It's not the point of majesty of Malkut. It's a very interesting point. There are two types of Nisim, two types of things are happening. One type of Nisim is that Agachwar who punishes the Muslim to teach them the lesson and bring out his own Malkut of Hashem. That's for the sake of Agachwar Baruch no, by the Radiamsu, that was done already. The Radiamsu, we need to save the Holy Spirit for the sake of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you want to save the Holy Spirit for the sake of the Holy Spirit, no, the Holy Spirit needs to have merit. They felt unworthy. They felt that what? We don't have that. Like Malachim say, it was of the Zoran of the right side. Malachim, they tiny over here, not there. Because over there, there's no title to make because that's not for the Holy Spirit per se. Not what to make? To make a claim. <laughs> by by, 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 by Mishraim, Malachim don't claim that Elu would have done Elu would have done Why don't they make a claim that over there was not? Because by Mishraim, the finger, that was one who is the majesty of Malchus. Therefore, therefore, it's not per se for the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it's the majesty of the Malchus. Therefore, Malachim don't have any claim. But here, salvation of Jews, Malachim say, oh, if it's salvation of Jews, then we need to. Allah. From here, we learn out a few things. If whatever that you do is part of the Malchut of Hashem, you get a different merit and zechut. You have part of the Malchut, a business, what you do, what you stand for in life. If it is mamash, for the expression of the manhood, then becomes like the template is the expression of manhood of Hashem. There's no claim, there is no. That's one thing we learned. The other thing we learned that the Holy Spirit felt maybe they are subject of the manhood of Hashem. The object, the object of manhood of Hashem. Therefore, there is not nothing. I was well, but now just used us to show his manhood, and that's it. Once he showed his manhood, that's it. We are, we are left alone. No, when the salvation of the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit saw that, in other words, this position that they were in, there wasn't any remedy for them. The only remedy was that they should serve them, right? And that showed that Adam Su is just not just, not just one nest for the Holy Spirit. One nest it doesn't mean that much. But one, what the Adam Su means, that by the Adam Su shows the Holy Spirit that we don't get stuck. A true, Always has to remember what we learn from Radam so is that even, even if the, everything looks like that we are stuck, there's no way out, there's the way out. That was what we said, that's the way out. That was, that was the point of the point of Radam Suf more than anything else in life. Now I was who told that the, the, the young should split up. And then when the you know, Hakodeshwar who brought a wind, strong wind, that the strong wind made. It. Now, Ramban asked the Kasha, unbelievable Ramban. Ramban says, what was the most wondrous thing that Hashem did in this time? Now, if you ask people, people will say, Makat Bechorot, make Barot, Esh and fire and ice together against the nature. But Ramban says something unbelievable. Ramban says the greatest event that happened in this time was when HaKadosh Baruch Hu did the Adam Suri, that Egyptian went in the sea. Okay. Very interesting point that, that Ramban asked, what's the most wondrous thing that Hashem did in Mishraim? The most wondrous thing that Hashem did in Mishraim was that, you know, the one could think that it is like at the Chorot, one would think that it is uh, uh, borrowed fire and ice together, 
But Ramban says the most wondrous thing that Rosh Baruch did was that when Gaisa went to the Yom, Hashem made this strong wind to come and to spread up. And Mishim, they thought it's there by its nature. It's not that Rosh Baruch. And they went after them. Hashem was mechazik their heart. They should go after them. After seeing all of the ten plagues, it was only a room for them to make a mistake and go. <laughs> they are putting themselves in Sakana, but they did it. Now the word that Kodesh Baruch took away their Bechira, free will, to go. Ramban says, this is the most wondrous thing that here. I was wondering, why? Why is it most wondrous? The Makkad Bechorot Barat is much more. Now, Ramban is teaching us something very important you saw in life, that Kodesh Baruch Hu, <laughs> playing around with the Bechira of people, that is much harder thing to do. Because here, the Muslim that have their own Bechira, in Shesh David Bereshit, that was all created, that people should have Bechira. Free will. Now, the free will means that now you are in charge. Now, I could explore to go to my separation and change that and take away the free will is much harder than putting ice and fire together. From here, you see the who's, power who's, of free will. Whose who's free will do you take away? I was sure to see the Ramadan says, the what? <coughs> no. Here, the Messiah, we learned the parasha that the Messiah went to young. I did go now. That is why I went to young, because they saw the rest. Why do you think you go? Such a dangerous thing to do. Why are they going to young? They see it with that. So so I was sure yeah, who sure brought the strong wind, and they said they justified with the wind, and they went through. But still, Ramban says it doesn't make sense. Because you know 10 places you've got placed, one after the other one. You go through the yard. Ramban says that Gosh Baruch take away their Bechir of free will, and they went inside. Because Gosh Baruch wants to show the, the greatness of Hashem and to show the Jehali Stoyer that I'm going to destroy your enemies. This is your salvation. Hashem wanted to do that. Now, the point is, Ram, Ramban is saying that's the greatest Miracle that happened in Israel more than anything else. Now we are understanding why is it the greatest miracle? Because the greatest miracle is to change the Bechira. Because in Shesha the Bereshit, Akash Baruch Hu created the free will. What does free will mean? Free will means that people are in charge. Now you give the, the string in the hand of somebody else, now we have to take back the string. In the nature, whatever Akash Baruch Hu created, but the string is in his hand. He could change whatever that he wants. But to change Bechira, that is something. From here, you learn the power of the Bechira. The power of Bechira is such a great power that makes everything. Now, we're going to go to the... That's why I say by Amir Bashem Moshe. So now we're going to answer all of the questions. They believe they came to a new belief, Chagodesh Barbar Moshe, that in this matter, we are not an object, we are subject. It's unbelievable, yes, so. In other words, we, we as the Umo of Akadosh Baruch Hu, we're not just an object that Akadosh Baruch Hu wipes his hand with us. So no, no, you are important. You are primary for me. They got that by Yaminu Bahashem Moshe Abdo in a new step of Emuna. You trust, in other words, you trust your, your boss. He's very honest. And he gives you, he pays you on time. And he wants good for you. But you don't believe that the boss wants you as a partner. He cares for you as a partnership. He cares for you as what you are, not as you pay you for whatever that you worked for me. In other words, the emun of God is not aware. Okay, Hashem pays us well. Very good. You are very happy having such a boss. But the reality also shows that you are my primary job that I have, we are partner together. We are all together. That level of emuna grew up by Kahal Israel. And that's the emuna that we should have for our We're not just here to victimize, to be victimized for the majesty of Hashem. We are here to be partner with our Baruch to rectify the evil and bring the righteous in the world. This is our job. This is, no. Once you get that feelings in life, you are a different person. You look at life different. You understand life different. That's why we have such a shiro. The shiro over here is the shiro, not just we came out of Islam. Came out of Islam is a nice boss. He cares and he does. No, it's much more than that. 
Vayamiru Bashim would really came to such a great amuna that we are part of our Spark who we are the same system. We 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 know the Bahadur Spark who made us body matem like a son. So a person is part of his being. When I was who says, you know, Hashem is not Persian, part of neither. You say that, that you are my body, you know, we really mean it. And we have to understand that it means it. You're not, in other words, a lot of times you feel Hashem is a policeman. Hashem is there to catch us. Hashem is there to see what they did wrong. Unfortunately, I think it's the wrong education mm-hmm. that we grew, we grew like that. And we will be raised up our children like that. Oh, you do this. No, that's not the point. The point is we are oneness in Akadosh Baruch Hu, and that is, this Shira is above. It's Shira. Now, how could everybody say Shira together? How is it possible? The world in together? Now, most of the say it was a prophecy, it was a mess. Now, everybody got in such a high level of understanding of Akadosh Baruch Hu, that all of the lines of thinking and processing came the same, and everybody says, some say that Mushra Benu said they repeated after. But others learned that no, it was the elevation of an Uma all together. What Shiv Khasa made, made so by Gradamsu, Yechaskel Benbuzi, that he saw the chariot of Akhodesh Baruch, who didn't see it. That's the elevation of the nation. And that's, by the way, power of a nation. If we have a group as a, as a community, we elevate ourselves. We get to something it's much higher than one individual gets before. One individual, Yechaskel, could see the chariot of Akhodesh Baruch Hu, but it's not such great. But once a nationwide, the community together, people together, they about each other, to mechasek each other, to see Hashem is a much greater event for Akhodesh Baruch Hu. Now, that was the point of the Shira. They got to that level and they said, it. now, the world of the Shira started with us. Oh, Yashir Moshe. Now, Chazal tell us, why did Moshe Rabbeinu start with us means them? Them. Now, Chazal tell us, Moshe Rabbeinu sinned with us, and that's the derech of Sadiqim. The way of Sadiqim is, they understand their mistake and they rectify it. Now, once somebody said, somebody feels that he doesn't do any sin, it's a great disruption. Who is Sadiq? Sadiq Nafal will come. Sadiq that understands he falls and he gets up is a Sadiq. Sadiq that he feels that I never fall, I never do anything wrong, is not a Sadiq, it's a Russia. There's no question about it. The Sid could mean, Sid could mean, mean Sodek, means right judgment. Right judgment is that I made a mistake, I'm ready to rectify myself. Now, Moshe Rabbeinu told Agadosh Baruch who he got upset when they didn't give straw to them and they were destroying the children and, and it was such a disaster for Am Israel. When he came, with me all body from the day that I came, the nation became worse. Why did you do that? With the word of us, he made a mistake. He understood his mistake. Now he's rectifying with the us, Yashir Moshe on Israel. With the same word that he made a mistake, the same word he is rectifying that. And that's the sitko. Sitko is to recognize the sin, to recognize the shortcoming, to recognize what is lacking. And through that, to come up to rectify that. Now, it's not just playing the word. What is it? Oh, means the then. What does the then mean? Then means it's a piece of time. We are focusing on on us then. In other words, when we work with Akadosh Baruch Hu, we have to have a perspective of forever. We can't just look at the one time for itself. One time for itself is a big puzzle. Akadosh Baruch Hu doesn't work with time. Time is timeless. The word is everlasting. Now, when you look at one point of the man, one point is the big puzzle. We have such a great question. What's happening to God Israel? No, we didn't understand in the everlasting perspective, Hashem is making the Avodah much harder that it should come up, come out earlier. No, why does Hashem do that? The Avodah should be such a hard Avodah that they should get, get rhythm faster? Because if we don't do that, they are not going to be redeemed anymore. Because they're going to be, be immersed in Tumor so much 
that they cannot be saved anymore. The Brahmadesh Baruch is really helping them. And Mushlapir is complaining. Why? Perspective of us then. When you focus on one thing by itself, life is a big puzzle. Now, I, 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 no, 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 I guess Sakti, he made them that the Avoda should be much harder because really they have to stay there 400 years. Huh? They have to stay there 400 years. Right. They stay 210. Oh, okay. The Brashem made it harder that the hardship should take place of 400, as if 400 of, of, of hardship and Abu Dhabi concentrated in 210. They were at the, at the time that Moshe Rabbeinu had to take them out, they had to fill up the capacity that was, uh, was there to be filled up. The, the hardship that they have to take, according to the Cheshbon. Now Hashem made it harder that they should come out. Now, why did Hashem want that? Because we say, our result says, if one second they would come later, the Geula was impossible. There was a point of 49 to what they went inside. There was impossible to save them anymore. The Rakhodesh Baruch who is manipulating and doing things to save us. Now, what's the mistake? The mistake is us. Because what does us mean? Us means them. When your perspective is them, that time, that piece of time, then you are wrong with Avodah Shabbat. Because we Hashem, we cannot package Avodah Shabbat in one, 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 one piece of time. We have to have the perspective of everlasting. In other words, if you look at life like that, it's a much different ball game. A lot of times, the nature of a person is not like that. Nature of a person, you focus on what is in front of you. Oh, why is it like that? Why is it In the everlasting, it's much better. Now, we still imagine an operation room. They are operating hard of somebody. At that time, they are cutting. But in everlasting, they make him life longer. If they don't do that, he's going to die. Yeah, but the shira was. You have to look out. at life as a whole, not just one thing. Oz means the then. Then means that maktai zamoni. That's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the piece of time by itself. When you look like that, life becomes possible. Because by Hakadosh Baruch Hu, that doesn't work like that. That means everlasting. Meaning, like, like now it says, Ahabat Olam Ahabti. I was going to tell the Harish Lawyer, remember, I was going to tell the Harish Lawyer, I have a problem with you. What's my problem with you? That my love for you is not momentary. My love is you, Ahabat Olam Ahabti. My love is everlasting. Everlasting love. In other words, that is in relationship also. If you have a moment love for somebody, you act differently. If you have everlasting, you respect, you understand, you, your children. If you have a love moment love, you give candy and this and that, you make them busy yeah. to be busy yourself on a free time. Or you want to educate them. You have to take the harder job to educate them. This is what happens in life. Now, it's very interesting that in the Shira, which is Susur of Ramadan, no, the word, when you fight with the somebody is riding, rider, rider, when you fight with the rider, sometimes you fight with the somebody, the one who is rider, or the horse. This, there are two ways to get the rider. <coughs> sometimes you destroy the horse, through that the rider doesn't have any way to fight, or you get the rider. Now the pastor says, Sus but I was who does, Sus and the rider, both together, he he throw them in the yard, throw them in the yard. The Rakhodesh Baruch now that's the power of Hashem. Power of Rakhodesh Baruch is that he gets the rider and, and the horse. Now, the rider and the horse are a metaphor for, for, for the power. Now, the person has power with himself, and the person has, you know, different things to help him. It's the army as a well. Yeah. Now, there are human beings are, you, you, you fight with the army of a person, then you catch the person. Or you catch the person, but HaKadosh Baruch who goes together, that, and that's the majesty of Hashem. Now, there are three magical words. In other words, when they got to such an elevation and such a great position, the Holy Spirit, the legacy of the Holy Spirit is that such a position should be kept for their children. And now, they said this legacy to the children. What's the legacy that they said to the children? This is my God and I praise him. Now from here, the Gemara learns out that whenever that we do a mitzvah, we have to do, beautify the mitzvah. It's not enough to do the mitzvah. 
تلید به تلید تفیلی به تفیلی بودی رو دادیم نمیشون یو هف تو زیکیلی من به هو نو بیسایز دا دیس شوز دی گریتنس دا وی هف تو هف پر دی میسود خشی بودا رو میسود دی زیکیلی من به هو دی چی ماجیکال وورد that makes the secret of happiness. In other words, when they got to that high, they were so happy. Because they were with the father. Now, once a father is very happy, what does he do? He wants to keep the legacy for the children also. Now, how do you keep the legacy for the children? They kept the legacy with the three magical words. What are these three magical words or secret of happiness or three magical words that they say in the Shira the Hal story? Because they became a prophet. The prophecy gave them understanding that to give that legacy to Gahal Sahib. What are the three magical words? Number one. Ze, Keli, and Rehu. This is my God, and Rehu, I praise him. Now, why these three magical words? It sounds very simple. Why these magical words are saving all of secrets of life? Because Ze, we have two types of pronoun. One pronoun is this, one is that. This is close for now, what is in front of you. That is far, it's not there. Most people live in this or in that, Henry. Most people live in this or that. Most people live in that. What do I mean to say? If I would have had such a job, I would have been, I would have been, if I would have different wife, I would have done it better. If I would have that better child, I would have done it better. You always hear from people that they are not happy with whatever that they have. Only overall, always they look for that, not this for that. If I had that, then yes, you are right. I could have finished child, I could have hair, I could have this and that, but not in this situation, I cannot do it. So I want to ask you, which one is the expression of Malchut Hashem? This or that? Which one, in other words, whatever that we see around ourselves, that was the Shira, power of the Shira. They saw everything is the expression of Malchut of Hashem. They saw all of the Merirut, all of the bitterness that they had in Mitzrayim was not just around them. That Merirut was Rabbi Avadosh Baruch to build them up, to make them higher and higher. They saw with the Nebu of prophecy, and they understood that that's the Hashimut of the Shira. That, you know, even more will make Baruch and Besa. This means when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is expressing his Malchut, his expression of the Malchut is this, what we have in front of you. Your job, your wife, your children, your situation, all of them, don't look at them as random. It's not Mr. Jose that's in front of you. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, not the, it's not IRS. It's not this. It's not that. What are they? Expression of Malchut. It's a perspective that they go, see, this, don't live in that. <laughs> They're on the tomb of somebody, Ruhu de Ruhu, that, you know, he was waiting for that to happen and he would but have become a hero. <laughs> he never made it. Of course, you don't never make that. That perspective. They, said, the they set conditions based on this and that. Right. right. Therefore, 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 the chokhmah that they got is to understand what you are in, that's the expression of malchut, and that makes the best of you. If you accept it, make assessment and work. Don't leave another, I, I never learned why I don't have Hadith. I never go to I'm sure. I never did that, that then. I never go and ask a question, I have a problem, because I didn't find a rabbi or somebody to solve my problem. That, when I find, I do it. 12 years, 20 years, pass this back, pull. Oh. Somebody said, okay, Rabbi, you, you say that this is Malchut of Hashem, I accept you. But I tell you something. This, what HaKadosh Baruch gave us, Malchut of Hashem, is collectively good for the Holy Spirit. It's not personally good for me. Hashem wanted me to have this position because this position has to be filled up. No, Hashem filled it up with me and in my, my bad luck. On that, we say, the Shira says, the Keli. What does Keli mean? Henry, what does Keli mean? That's my right. God. No, no. No, Eli. It's Eli. Hashem. No. My God. No, I want to ask you a question. When all the high school are saying Shira, they should say all God or my God. Which one is better? Our God, of course. Our God. God. But I say my God. You know why? It's a personal expression. Because the, the, the prophecy, the understood 
I share customized right. for my greatness. <laughs> anything that happens in my life, this is good for me. This is good for me. It's customized, it's not collective. Everything has a turbo, right? A turbo, in other words, action is doing good. Now, the goodness of our control would be collectively. Now, when you are in prison of a company, you are good to everybody. But there are some positions that have to be filled down. You do it collectively, divide the positions. You can't, you know, you are, your hands are tied. You can't just be personalized to every person. To some extent, you could, but yeah, absolutely you can. Now, what would I wish for do? In the Nebuah, they understood this is my personal that you just like you have my doctor, my dentist, my accountant. All of his focus is what's good for me. It's my job. Now, somebody could say, okay, Rabbi, you convinced me. This is the Malchut of Hashem, and this is what Hakon Shwarko wants for me. But at the end of the day, I'm never. <laughs> I'm never. I don't like the situation. I don't like this. It's never. I'm never. Now, when that is it, what does Anvehu mean? Praise him. Count your blessing and praise him. Now, I tell you, I tell you a story, mm. small story. And then we finish up a little bit later. The small story is like this, that somebody had a field on the top of the hill. And the bottom of the hill was a river. And he had a, he had a, he had a bucket. Both had the bucket. And they had to fill up the bucket from the bottom of the river and to come up on the hill to mm. water. Now, one of them was a rich man. He had a bucket, very good bucket. He got and up there and went. The other one was poor a little bit. His bucket had some holes inside. Couldn't afford to have a better bucket. And he would get the water. And when he would get to the top of the field, some water would go halfway. He would halfway water. He would, he would, he would water it halfway. He would drip on the drip, floor. Drip on the floor, right. And he would have halfway because there's a hole. Now, always he lives in the depriv deprivation. Because, you know, my friend here has a full full bucket and mine's in half. And he was sad about it. Why is he like that? Then he came to a rabbi and told him, you know, it's a, it's a story of my life every day. It's a deprivation. I'm so sad. Why should I be like that? I go down, I think same tircha, the same, the same trouble, the same thing. And this is half this. He told him, come, come, I want to show you. Said, what? Come. This. He took him to the hill. He showed him the road that the other one went. The road that the other one is so dry. So dry, just dry land. The road that he went, because of dripping water, made a lot of flowers there. The road was such a nice scene. Beautiful flowers, beautiful grass. See, he says, look at your behind. His behind is the dry land. There is nothing there. But you here, you create the flowers with that dripping and everything. Why do you think deprivation? I could have well, you know, once it does whatever that you are doing, Hashem makes it to be good for you, good result for you. Otherwise, once we don't have naked eyes, that's the point of the shira. Shira is don't be narrow-minded in life. I could have well, who is there to help you, and that's it. All of the point of the shira is that we were weak, and I was well, who came and helped us. Now, one of the point of the shira is not the hero. Hashem is awesome to praise. What does awesome to praise means? That whatever that we say, Baruch is not enough. No, good. And so they said Shira. What happens right after the Shira? The women also say Shira. What happens right after the Shira? No, one would think that if I was by Kiratamsu, after the Shira, we would come close to Baruch Baruch so much. After the Shira, what happens after the Shira in the Torah? Maybe what happened? They complain. We don't have water. Why is the Baruch Baruch? Water is very bad. Yes. Not maybe, but no, 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 that, that they didn't have Boba, they know. Actually, tomorrow, they come tomorrow. Why you not show? Why you know how Al Moshe and Bor managed the, the complaints that Moshe was with me? No, one would think if I was in Kadam I would have glorified life. My life would have been different. I would believe in Akadosh Baruch Hu. I would do all of the mitzvot properly. And the Torah says, You are a liar. It's a shaker. It's not much shaker. The Torah tells us right after Kadamsu, the Holy Spirit complained against Hashem, we don't have water. The Torah is teaching us unbelievable lesson in life. You think Kadamsu helps you. Kadamsu doesn't help you. If a person wants to help himself, then he could get help. 
In other words, don't rely on the Nisim and the flow that this and that it would help you to elevate you to get closer to Abish Baruch If you learn Musar, you work on it. It's much greater than Kiradamsu. Because Kiradamsu happened by the Holy Spirit. Right after Kiradamsu, they complain. Don't think that the complaint would stop it seeing such a majesty, such a sin. Such a sin doesn't help. Doesn't help. Then the Aparash of Mon, obviously Mon, shows that the Parnasa is around the Shbarhu, Hashem rains the Mon from Shamayim. The Parnasa doesn't come from the earth, comes from Shamayim. Shamayim means Zechud and Nerit. We are Zechud and Nerit, we build up the Parnasa, the Emuna that we have, those Sadiqim that they were closed, and they would keep the Mon for one day with warmth. Now, I just finished up with this, with the story of Mon, that Mon, in other words, Torah was not given only to us that they eat man. Why? Well, I'm, Why? Thinking, well, I'm sorry. Torah was given to those that they eat man. What's so special about man? The first thing is what's special about man was that man came daily basis. They wouldn't know that they have man for a week, daily basis. Today you have man, you don't have done tomorrow. You don't know. And if you keep it warm, if you are not keep it, <laughs> that's the situation. You know, imagine you have a man. And you are greedy. What happens tomorrow? My money stop. My money stop. Right? There was a guarantee that mom comes. You want to keep it for months, and you know that's our life. You want to keep things. And Hashem says, no, worms doesn't stay. Now in the klalot, if you notice, one of the worst klala is your life would be hanging over you, over your face. Now the Farshim say, what's the life is hanging over you? If you have food for today, you don't have food for tomorrow. Now Mikhtar Veliyahu asks a contradiction in Torah. In one way, in Parashat Man, we say one of the greatest and privileged of one was, it was a daily basis, they didn't have. And through that, they had to work on Emunah and Bitochon. That helped them to understand Torah better, to connect to Havon Shvaruch better. But in the Klaal, it says, if you have man food for today, you don't have food tomorrow, it's the greatest crawl in life. Mechtar Yahu says, unbelievable lesson in life. You know, the cares and beracha is the same situation. You have food for today, you don't have food for tomorrow. The beracha and kelala is how do you deal with the situation. Situations doesn't create beracha and kelala. Beracha and kelala is the hand of a person. How do you deal with the situation? If you deal with the situation, you eat up yourself, you eat up your family, you become sad and depressed, and you feel the world came to an end, you don't practice the moon and we talk of that was part of it's disaster. That's the greatest cloud. You go down and down, you take down, drown yourself and your family, your children, your wife, or you elevate yourself. You say we don't have food for tomorrow means you have to dive in, you have to pray. We have to gather zechud and merit. We have emuna and bitachon. With emuna and bitachon, you elevate yourself. It was that experience becomes the greatest blessing in your life because that made you elevate yourself. Therefore, Mikdav Yahu says, Beroch and Kelala doesn't depend on the situation with your perspective. Last thing that happened is the parasha, the Amalek comes. Moshe Ketob, so Amalek comes and fight with the Holy Spirit. No, they were the Holy Spirit, they were very hot with the shiro and everything. And in the in the in, in the in the in the heat, they came, Amala came and and fought with them. Why? Because Rafu Yedehem in a Torah had got the last. When they were weakened in the Torah, in other words, Torah is teaching us here a big good lesson. Good lesson is sometimes we get to the peak. What happens to a person that gets to the peak? So you have peak. You find yourself, Baruch Hashem, learning and high, highlight of learning. And uh, you know, the, the, then when you get to a peak, you have to make it to be, in other words, this and how to come to a person and say, you made it. You made it, Baruch Hashem, you made it. Therefore, your guard will be off. And that is the territory of Yetzirah. You see in life, there was an article. Those that they think in the peak, they fall. Why? Because once they think, they might become comfortable so The guard is off. Once the guard is off, the enemy knows how to attack. They were here, they got to the peak, and they felt safeguard. In other words, they everything got. The guard was off. In other words, 
head into a pitch has to be used to elevate yourself and to adapt something to make the growth a good experience of growth. Not, there are two ways of growth. One gets a growth, oh, yeah, I accomplish. And then my second, I accomplish. Then, okay, good. Now, next time, I'll see what I do. Oh, no. Once you accomplish something, that accomplishment becomes the stage of growth to build up yourself greater. Not that I finished. In other words, no, that's like Ben Torah is called, you know, Talmud Chacham. Talmud Chacham is the Talmud. We don't say Rabbi Chacham, Talmud Chacham. Always you have to feel that there is a lot to become accomplished. You do something like moon. Moon goes and becomes complete, then he has to drop and become group. If moon would feel that's complete and he wants to stay like that, that's the greatest disaster. That's why I was one who makes Galatoa like a moon for 24 hours disappears and then and always like that. Person said, I did in Hiro Habanim the best. I got the highest score. No. That's why we have in Torah Afshalom. What does Afshalom mean? The son of David Malik was Afshalom. What does Afshalom mean? Father of peace. Now, what happens to Father of peace? Father of peace means you have peace with everybody, right? Father of peace. What happens with the Father of peace? Father of peace. Father and son couldn't get together. He wanted to kill the father. Father. Of shalom means when you feel you are a father of something, that's a pitfall. Because you never, always you have to grow higher and higher. Once you have ambition for growth higher and higher, then you accomplish much greater. That, that's the Amalek that came in this parasha in the highlight of God's Israel. They felt that, you know, they felt that they're going to make it higher and higher, but the, the guard is off. The enemy could attack. So Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom.